legislation. The distinguished majority whip, Mr. Clyburn. The gentleman from South Carolina, the Democratic whip of the House of Representatives, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the gentleman, the chairman, for yielding me these five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I um, listen uh, to my colleague on the other side. I uh, still think about the night of June 17, 2015, when about 9 o'clock in the evening I received a phone call informing me that something had happened at Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, a church that I know very well, the members I know or very well. Much to my dismay, I learned later in the evening that a Bible study that was taking place at that church had welcomed in a stranger. I grew up in the Postnets, and I grew up learning that what we find there in the book of Hebrew, the 11th chapter, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. These people were practicing their faith, a faith that taught them to welcome in a stranger. A stranger came to their door and they welcomed into their Bible study. They sat down. He sat with them for an hour. And in the further practice of their faith, as they completed their Bible study, they rose to pray. And with bowed heads, only to open their eyes to the sound of gunfire, the stranger that they had welcomed in opened fire and killed nine of them, one of whom was the pastor, a former intern of mine. Now, we later found out that the gentleman who perpetrated this crime was a white supremacist that studied the history of that church. And because it was the most historic African-American church in South Carolina, he targeted that church and its worshipers. However, he should not have had the gun. And the reason he had the gun is because when he went to purchase it, when the three days expired as current law allows, they had not been able to verify the information he had given them and therefore could not complete the background check. But under the law, they had to sell him the gun after the three days, only to find out several days later that some wrong information had been put into the record. Now I ask, and I sincerely believe that this gentleman's sophistication, he knew he was not to have the gun. Did he give the wrong information intentionally? I think so. And when they found the error, it was too late. Nine souls had perished. Now, the gentleman said that he was lucky that the gun didn't go off and these laws would not have prevented that this law would have prevented 
that gentleman from getting a gun. Now, I don't know why the other side continued to misrepresent what we're trying to do here. All we're saying is, if at the end of the three days, you ought to move to 10 days. And if the 10 days expire, you can ask for an expedited search. And if that expires, you still have 10 days. The maximum is 30 days. Nobody is keeping a gun away. It's Everybody <laughs> should be able to wait 30 days. Gentlemen's time has All expired. The gentleman has yielded 30 additional seconds. I'll ask the other side. Is a wait of 30 days worth the death of nine unsuspecting souls, that alone ought to instruct them on legislation like this one. I'll yield back. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. 